welcome friends to another session on coordinate geometry so in the other video we saw how coordinate geometry uh, got evolved how it got associated in uh, associated with mathematics we also saw wide application areas of coordinate geometry so including gps including graphics uh, visual effects entertainment gaming and uh, manufacturing you know, name it and coordinate geometry is involved over there. So, in fact, in geography also, if you see, you, you would have studied about latitudes, longitudes, all that, isn't it? So, equator is at zero degree and uh, things like that. So, basically, all of this is linked to coordinate geometry. Now, um, in other subjects as well, for example, in vector algebra or let's say in uh, complex numbers later on when you will be uh, taking up higher mathematics there also you will see the knowledge of coordinate geometry becomes very very handy and it comes so useful right so hence it is pertinent for us all to study coordinate geometry and understand uh, what it means how it is useful in mathematics and what are the different aspects of coordinate geometry so let's begin in this session what we are going to do is we are going to define the basics of coordinate geometry so what all terms are there so that you know next uh, sessions when we are discussing about those things it becomes clear to all of you okay so you can see i have shown here a white sheet a graph paper like sheet right so you, in your previous grades you would have used a graph paper and the graph paper is nothing but a, a grid like structure a sheet of paper uh, which is divided into so many parallel lines or cut by so many parallel li parallel lines and then there are lots of squares in it isn't it so this is what it looks like so this is just a typical graph paper this thing and on top of it we are also showing two lines and uh, what do you observe guys so if you see these two lines are mutually perpendicular to each other this is what the observation is so imagine your table on which your laptop is kept right now or a sheet of paper on which you write anything. So you can imagine that uh, that paper is there. And in that paper, what you have done is you have just taken two mutually perpendicular lines. You need not be exactly at the center anywhere. You just draw two lines which are mutually perpendicular. Now the question is, can it uh, or is it necessary only to be uh, having a perpendicular line can i not draw a line like this maybe so let's say i'm drawing a line like this let me draw a line like this so can't i have a line like this is it not possible why can't i have another line drawn like that so we'll discuss that as well before uh, before that we have to just uh, tell you what exactly these things are so hence what i'm saying is any given plane right so the word is plane Okay, so this word is what we are going to talk about. So any plane, so plane can be sheet of paper, isn't it? So this is a plane sheet of paper. Your uh, ceiling, your floor, walls of your room, cover of your book, tabletop, bed sheet cover, right? Anything, carpet, all these are plane. Screen, computer screen, Right now on which you are seeing it or maybe a mobile phone screen all are examples of plane so when there's a plane and not that aeroplane so that is also called plane in short but this is a plane which is a you know a flat surface okay now in any flat surface or a plane i can always draw these two perpendicular lines anywhere anywhere so you know they need not be in the center or a corner anywhere once you do it uh, then it becomes very easy to locate any other point on that plane. What do I mean? So let me just uh, give you an example. So let's say here is a point or, you know, better would be, let's say this is your home. This particular point is your home. Just a example. Okay. Or you can imagine there is a Google map or a map, simple map, and there are two cities, A and B. B is the, you know, your reference point from where, let's say, there is another city, uh, C, okay? So, what you're doing is, if you have to reach A, what you're doing is, you are going from, 
from B to C like that and from C to A. Okay, so you'll reach A if you go like that. Now you'll ask why do I need to go like that? You can go in any random direction. You will be reaching A for example. You can say that I can go like this. Right? You can go like that. Yes, you can definitely. But let's say, don't you think this is also one of the several ways of going it, going towards A. Now why this is important is, so uh, if you now see this point A can be uniquely defined, defined in the sense, where is this point A on this plane? Or let's say this was your home, B is your home and A is your school. Let's say you are in your school. So with reference to the home, the school can be uniquely defined. How? So I can have this, that, okay, there is a point C here. So which is, let's say, U distance away. In this given, it is given as U, but I am saying, let's say, X. So you walk or cycle down or take a car or bus X kilometers to C. Then you take a left turn and go to A for Y kilometers. So hence, this point A is X towards, let's say, this direction is East. and then. After covering x kilometers towards east, you take a left turn and move towards north and you reach A. Correct? So hence, if I denote this x by A by x, y, this, these two numbers, x and y, let me take an example. Let's say this is 10 or in this case, anyways, I have the numbers with me. So you can see C is 4 kilometers. Let's say this one unit is 1 kilometer. So C is 4 kilometers away from B in the east direction and from C A is 3 kilometers away isn't it okay so can I not say we, I can denote this A by this new method what is this so I'm writing the uh, the x value that is 4 and 3 later like that so 4 and 3 will denote that you have to come 4 kilometers towards east then take a left turn and go to Go towards a three kilometers right so hence you will reach a similarly you could have done this way as well so you could have gone to this point first three kilometers and then you could have gone to a like that so you reached your school through these two methods these two paths and the uniqueness about this path is it is very regular shaped so you can see there's a 90 degree here so only 90 degrees are allowed if at all let's say and only one turn is allowed so then you can go like this okay so 4 comma 3 becomes the this is called the coordinate or it's like the pin number of your school coordinate 4 comma 3 is coordinates of a okay this is what we say coordinates of a okay so um why is this unique because if you take any two other values, for example, let's take random values x is equal to 7 and uh, y is equal to 5. Let's say. So where will I reach? So here is you have to go 7 units here and then you have to go up 5 units, isn't it? So like this, like that the previous case. So this point here is 7. This can be denoted by 7 comma 5. Okay. What do we observe from this all? So we see that any point in the plane, let's say this is the point. So what is this? So if you see, if I have to reach this point, let's say D. D. So how do I go? So first in X, you know, in west direction I'm going. So let's say this is west direction. West. How much distance did I cover? 5. And from here, I went up to how many kilometers so 1 2 3 4 5 this is also 5 so 5 so how do i represent d shall i write 5 comma 5 if i write 5 comma 5 then i will not be able to differentiate this 5 comma 5 with let's say this num this this is also 5 units 5 units the only difference is this is in east and this is in west is it this is in east and this is in west. So how do I differentiate between these two? So I just put a point negative sign here because if you would consider this to be positive, east to be positive, you can easily see west to be negative. 
right? So you can see the numbers are also like that. So this this differentiates point D with point let's say E, though their the distances are same, but they are in the east direction. One is in the west direction. So hence the negative sign will help. So what where will be minus five comma minus five? So if you see minus five comma minus five will be somewhere here. So minus five in this direction and then minus five in the south. Okay, so this point is minus five comma minus five. And what about another one? Let's say minus five, uh, five comma minus five. So if you see five comma minus five is this. So we see that any point on this graph paper can be uniquely. When I say uniquely, meaning there is only one way of doing it. So uniquely by pair of numbers, which are also called ordered pair. Ordered. Why ordered pair? Because in which order they are written is very very important. Can you see? Five comma minus five is at this location. The pin number is totally different. But minus five comma five is totally opposite direction here. So that means in which order you are writing the numbers are also important. So if you change the order, you'll get to some other location. So it's like if the orders are changed, then instead of America in GPS, you'll be appearing to be present in let's say Brazil or somewhere else, right? So that's how ordered pair works or or meaning thereby we can define so we can define any point for that matter any point you take this point this point and this point you will always get two numbers or even if they are not integer values let's say here randomly placed anywhere anywhere here here and all that all of this will give you some unique combination or pair of numbers for example if you take this one what is this this is 7 comma minus 2 why 7 because it is x in x it is 7 and down here minus 2 like that i hope you understood what is meant by you know uh, coordinates how a point can be defined in any given plane uh, in terms of two numbers which are called ordered pair and this is what is the first learning of the day so apart from that, let us also define some things or name them. So for example, this is called, we don't talk in terms of east and west and all that. This is called x-axis. x-axis. So this is denoted by x. Let me change another color. And this is x dash. x, x dash is east-west line. You can say like that. And this is y. And this is called y, y dash. Okay. And any for example, this was 7 comma 5, right? Or this is 7 comma minus 2. So this number, the first number of this pair is called x coordinate. x coordinate or it is also called absica or absisa, whichever way you want to pronounce it, absica or absisa. And this one is coordinate, coordinate or it is also called y coordinate. I'm writing in short y coordinate okay so this is the x coordinate this is the y coordinate okay here also this is x coordinate and here it is y coordinate isn't it here this is x so first x and then y okay now questions could be is it the only way of doing it can we have a third coordinate as well yes in 3d geometry if you see there will be another line so imagine a line from b coming towards yourself perpendicular to the screen of you know, your phone or a tablet or a, a PC, wherever you are watching it. So a, play, a line which is coming from B towards you. Okay, so that becomes the Z coordinate. And imagine any point just above the screen or behind the screen. So you can define that using the third coordinate as well. Right, so we will take that up in a 3D geometry course. But right now we are going to confine all the discussions on a 2D plane. So I, I hope you have understood what are the coordinate axes. What is x coordinate of a point? What is y coordinate of a point? And what is physical significance of x coordinate and y coordinate? So x coordinate is nothing but if you see here the point x y a is x y. So x coordinate is nothing but distance of that point from y axis. This is called x. And what is y? Y is nothing but distance from the x axis, right? So this is this distance is y. This distance is y. Okay, for any x and y. For example. In this case, if you have 7, comma minus 2, so 7 is distance from y-axis, that is the x-coordinate. So please mind the order in which I am saying 7 is the x-coordinate, which is distance from y-axis. 
minus 2 is the y coordinate which is distance from x axis and minus and plus denotes whether it is on the positive side or on the negative side. Other information is if you see the entire sheet is let me just turn it off. So entire sheet is divided into four parts right. So the moment you draw two perpendicular lines you divide the entire sheet into four parts. So this part here where both x and y are positive. If you see all the if now I take a point here a let's say another point here and show you its coordinate. Okay so if I show you its coordinate right see 7 comma 4 both are positive both are positive so this is called first quadrant guys if I take this here see minus 5 comma 4 the x coordinate becomes negative it is called second coordinate or uh, second quadrant then see how different at different different locations the values of x and y are changing right here see minus 5 comma minus 2 so minus 5 minus 5 comma minus 2 this is third quadrant and here 6 comma minus 3 fourth quadrant y is negative isn't it x is positive here x is negative y is positive okay here both x and y are negative here both x and y are positive so you can just play around with this point and understand see different different locations both positive here only x is x is negative here both are negative here only y is negative like that so first quadrant second third and fourth so this is what is the basic information before we jump on to different concepts in coordinate geometry so i hope you understood the meaning of the terms let's again meet in the next session and understand different concepts related to coordinate geometry thank you guys for your time see you again bye bye